Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. This is Jay Stewart welcoming you to It Pays to be Married, the show that honors the American home. Each weekday, we bring you couples from all walks of life who've had problems in their marriages and solved them. We'll hear them tell their true stories recorded from their married lives, and then they'll have an opportunity to win our family fortune jackpot. Our first couple in a moment, but first... From the stories you've heard folks tell on Pays to be Married, you must have noticed, as we have, how often the importance of the home is emphasized. Oh, not the house itself. Its size and value are not important. But the home as the center of family activity. The gathering place to which children come after school. The place where the whole drama of life unfolds. It may be a little ranch house in the California Valley or an attic room in Ohio. But to the happily married couple, it's their castle. And as the famous song points out, be it ever so humble, there's no place like it. Some of our guests have told of their struggles to set up their homes, getting the money together for the down payment, perhaps even building the house themselves. Now, we hear the many stories of frustrations and the problems of living together, but all our guests have solved their problems, and they remind us that no matter what the struggles have been, it's worth it. A home, like, like everything else worthwhile, has to be worked for. And those who meet their problems and solve them remind us each day that it pays to be married. Now meet our first couple on a face to be married. Mona and Ken Hughes of Fern Creek, Kentucky. Fern Creek. Golly, that's a wonderful name. It's very big. About as big as it sounds. <laughs> yeah, well, how big is that? Well, it has a school, a uh, drugstore, and a barbershop. Mm. Barbershop. That's where you'll find Ken most of the time. Oh, what do you do hanging around a barbershop, Ken? Well, I'm a cemetery salesman. I sell cemetery lots. <laughs> <laughs> to barbers? I can explain that to you. See, I'm a member of the S-P-E-B-S-Q-S-A. Oh, that explains it very well, yeah. <clears throat> well, now, you're a member of that, and it keeps you away. I want you to repeat it for me. The S-P-E-B-S-Q-S-A. That's the Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America, and it's incorporated. Hey. Being a member of that affects your marriage in any way? Well, it uh, keeps me away from home quite a while. You see, it... It takes quite a bit of time, rehearsals and whatnot, for a, yeah. to have a pretty good quartet. Look, Kenny, uh, are you sure this quartet bit is it just an excuse to get a night out once in a while? Uh... Well, it could be. It could help. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, I thought four guys in a barbershop just got together in a barbershop to sing and started singing. Isn't that the way it usually works? Well, that, that's what I thought too, Jay. But uh -huh. honestly, they get a number and they rehearse and rehearse. And I'll, a gal actually have her husband around the house once in a while. Yeah. Honestly, I, I hope I never hear Sweet Adeline again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can sympathize with you, Mona. It probably gets to sound like a singing commercial oh. after a while. Tell me, did, did you two have any children? Yes, we have two little girls, Gay and Ray, age three and two years old. Oh, does Daddy sing the girls to sleep? Huh? No, that's my chore. He does all of his singing away from home. Oh. That's good practice for her, Jay. You see, we intend to have our own little quartet uh, when the kids grow up. Well, wonderful. <laughs> Sounds like there's going to be perfect harmony in your home from now on. And best wishes to you. Thank you. Mr. For each of our ladies today, here's a beauty gift from Richard Hudnut at Fifth Avenue. Everything you need for your hair. Enriched cream shampoo, Richard Hudnut cream rinse, and the wonderful new Richard Hudnut home permanent. And now for the most restful sleep you've ever enjoyed, here's a Westinghouse electric blanket. <laughs> Remember, you can be sure it's Westinghouse. Got what you wanted. Good. Oh. And to help prepare meals, Mrs. Hughes, a wonderful Miramatic pressure pan. Oh, good. And a completely automatic Miramatic electric percolator. Oh. Good. <laughs> now, in just a few minutes, you get a crack at our big family fortune jackpot filled with wonderful prizes and $250 in cash. Thanks for being with us. Monday night means music on NBC. When you set your dial to this station tonight, you'll be more than pleased by the wonderful musical programs awaiting you. Each Monday evening, the Railroad Hour presents one of your favorite operettas, especially adapted for the program. Star Gordon McRae is joined by a charming guest artist. And the Railroad Hour Orchestra is conducted by Carmen Dragon. Later Monday evenings, listen to the Telephone Hour with the music of Donald Voorhees and the Bell Symphonic Orchestra. The Telephone Hour always has a well-known guest soloist to add to your musical enjoyment. The program is made to order for a restful Monday night. When you tune for The Voice of Firestone Monday evenings on the NBC radio network, you're treated to music that never grows old, as performed by noted guest artists and Howard Barlow's orchestra. 
Voice of Firestone has been entertaining radio audiences on the NBC network for more than 25 years. And each Monday night, millions of listeners make it a special habit to tune to this great program. Enjoy NBC's Monday Night of Music tonight and every week on this same station. Now we'd like you to meet our next guest on It Pays to be Married. For this specially recorded interview, we went across the hall here at NBC in Hollywood to the wonderful Phil Harris, Alice Faye show. And there we met Phil Harris and Alice Faye. Hi, Jay. It's Hi. awfully nice to be with you. Good Hi, to have Jay. you. Hi, Jay. Good to see you. Thank you, Alice. First of all, I, I'd like you to know how much I enjoyed your radio program today. And secondly, as MC of It Pays to be Married, I want you to know that I've done a little research on your married life. The records say that you've been married to each other for 13 years and you have two lovely daughters. That's right, Jay. Alice and Phyllis. Alice is 11. Phyllis is 9. Nice-looking kids, too. I've seen their pictures. Well, I'll tell you something about them. They're not only the most talented kids that you've ever seen, but they are the most beautiful, Jay, that you will ever see. <laughs> they look exactly like me. <laughs> Well, uh, Phil, for two people in, in show business, you've had a very happy marriage. And earlier you told me that, that you and Alice reached an agreement when you were first married that helped bring about that happiness. So well, I think it did, uh, Jay. We'd been around an awful lot, and we didn't want to make a mistake. We wanted our marriage to be happy. And I was on the road a lot with a band, and that took me out on a lot of one-nighters. Consequently, I had very little home life for many, many years. And Alice was in pictures, and as you know, doing... The musical things, such as she did, uh, they require an awful lot of work and a lot of study. And we knew that that wouldn't work. So I said, Alice, what are we going to do? If we're going to be happy, we've at least got to arrange it so we're together. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, Phil, I have an idea I think will work. You give up the band business. In other words, you stop going on the road with the band, and I'll give up pictures, and I think we can have a very pleasant home life. And I said, well, that all sounds very good, but uh, how will we get bread, you know? <laughs> because... Uh, <laughs> you know, being in love is one thing And being hungry is another <laughs> So she said, well, Phil, I'm sure it'll work out some way Anyway, let's try it And we were very, very fortunate, Jay In as much as we got the idea And we created our little program And thanks to these nice people And all of our wonderful listeners It turned out successful And it made our marriage a very happy one. Turned out more than successful. That radio show enabled you to be together, have a happy home life, and in 1942, your first baby daughter was born. Phil, the day your first baby was born, the doctor attending Alice, who was a good friend of yours and an admirer of your musical talents, allowed you to witness the drama of your baby's birth at the hospital. Do you mind telling us about that? Well, I think that was one of the most important moments in my life, Jay. Like you say, this fellow was a very dear friend of mine, our doctor. And we were at the hospital at the time, and they were all getting ready to go inside. In fact, they'd just wheeled Alice up, and she was having a pretty hard time. Mm -hmm. And he said, I would like for you to come in. And I said, no, I I don't know. I just, you know, a lot of things going through my mind. And it was our first child and my first experience. And I, I he kept insisting, and I said, no, I, I don't think I'd care for that. So they closed the door, and something came into my mind, I don't know what it was, but I figured that it'd be a lot better to go inside rather than walk up and down the corridor drawing my own pictures, so to speak. So I knocked on the door and I said, I've decided to come in. And they gave me a real high chair right up over the operating table. And I watched the whole thing. And uh, when baby Alice was born, she, uh, well, was almost lifeless and was gray, just the color of cement. And they brought her over, the doctor that delivered her brought her over and put her on this table right in front of me. And um, he started working over, and I can't explain what went through my mind because I really don't know. It was like being in a coma. But um, he started, and, and uh, well, I just, I just thought it was impossible. But all of a sudden, I'll never forget it, a little pink started in her toes and then just slowly worked up to her knees and then on up and then covered the entire body, and just as it completed up at the top of her head, she let out a little whimper, and this doctor looked at me, and he says, Phil, you can have your band and Guy Lombardo's because this is the sweetest music I ever heard. A 
Bill and Alice, you heard sweet music again when your second child, Phyllis, was born in 1944. Mm-hmm. Isn't that right? That's right. And I must say that uh, we got a pretty swell home. We got two pretty swell kids, and we're very proud. That I'm sure of. Any comment from Mother now? Well, Jay, uh, I must tell you this, that through the birth of, of our two daughters, Phil was a very, very brave father. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Jay, it hasn't been too long ago that he said, uh, I wouldn't mind going through it again. <laughs> well, Phil, Phil Harris and Alice Faye, you are successfully combining home and career, and through your fine radio program, you're bringing wholesome fun and entertainment into the living rooms of America. It's been a great pleasure to have you here on It Pays to Be Married today. <laughs> Now then, Alice, so those nice daughters of yours can keep themselves looking lovely for Mom and Dad, we'd like you to have an attractive wardrobe of one dozen ship and shore blouses. Oh, wonderful, Jay. Love They're it. They're real pretty, and there's at least one for each day of the week. And also, for yourself, Alice, here's a set of Napier's exclusively designed fashion jewelry. <gasps> there's earrings, bracelet, and beautiful necklace. It's jewelry by Napier, makers of the best Fifth Avenue fashion jewelry and silverware. Thank you. And friend Phil, I understand that you're a real golf fan, and that you and Alice have a home in Palm Springs adjoining the golf course, so... To make your work on the front lawn easy and give you many carefree hours on the golf course, here for you is an Excello 18-inch power mower. <laughs> well, I'd much rather have the blouses, but <laughs> I can't use the mower, Jay, because I'm in the rough most of the time. <laughs> Well, you find the Excello Power Mower, you get easy running, dependable, trouble-free performance for Excello Mowers are constructed of top-quality materials. Again, our thanks for being with us and many happy, successful years of married life to you both. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. There's one question that probably causes more sleepless nights than all the others put together. It goes something like this. How can I save money when I hardly earn enough to keep going? Well, that's a serious question because it involves your future and your families. But it's not hopeless. True, it's not easy to save money at first. But once it becomes a habit, it's the simplest thing you ever did. Provided you choose a plan like the payroll savings plan for buying United States savings bonds. Just ask your employer to save a few dollars from your paychecks. Every time enough money accumulates... Your employer buys your savings bonds for you, automatically. Now, those those bonds mature in less than 10 years and pay you $4 for every $3 you put in. The payroll savings plan can mean extra money for your future. Join today. You'll feel more secure tomorrow if you buy United States savings bonds today. Now, here we go with that family fortune jackpot. In the jackpot today, there's an exclusive, luxurious cameo car of Chevy Chase Mohawk carpet. Lush pile, satiny cut service, a magnificent deep sculptured carpet from the looms of Mohawk. Now, there's a big, beautiful tap and gas range with the exclusive chrome-lined oven that gives you cooking and baking at its best. And the fat in the family fortune, $250 in cash. Now, inasmuch as Phil Harris and Alice Faye were interviewed outside of our studio today... Only one couple, Mr. and Mrs. Hughes, will be trying for that family fortune jackpot. I'll just ask you one question. I'll give you ten seconds. If you can answer it, the jackpot's yours, Mr. and Mrs. Hughes. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, listen carefully. What nation in the world raises more cattle than any other nation? One answer between you. Uh, one answer from two of you. No help. Russia. Gee, I'm sorry that was the answer you gave, Mr. Hughes. It's India. India mm-hmm. raises almost twice as many as second place United States. Well, <laughs> doggone it, nobody got the jackpot there, but we'll carry the prizes over until tomorrow and hope somebody wins them then. Thanks again, folks. <laughs> be sure to be with us again tomorrow at the same time for more interesting couples, folks just like you, and the true stories recorded from the married lives. Until then, this is Jay Stewart reminding you that it pays to be married. <laughs> Tonight, enjoy the Band of America on the NBC Radio Network.